Hey everybody, welcome back to Hot News. Glad to have you here on this sunny little Thursday. My, my Thursday's sunny now that you guys are here because it's been overcast outside, but your smiling faces beam up my day. That's how this works. I love you so much. Don't forget, in case you want to support UFD Tech directly, you can potentially become a channel member. That's right, YouTube has opened up the sponsorship program to everybody, not just Vigi Gamers. So if you want to support us with your $5 a month that YouTube takes a 30% cut of, you can check out the link in the video description or click that like button down below that says join you get special perks which includes live streaming with the entire UFD tech team which nobody else gets because we love you the most with that being said though let's just jump on into hot news finally we have some good news about windows my friends you've been waiting for it dark mode is finally coming to windows yes your windows explorer can be in dark mode they're bringing out a new patch they just released the new preview build 17733 which gives a night light which obviously affects the like the blue filter and makes it so that your eyes aren't burning from the blue light because we're just as humans not meant to handle that but then they're also instituting a dark mode which allows you to have a darker theme amongst all of windows instead of just in specific areas this is something the Macs have had for the longest time and windows users we've needed it and finally microsoft Microsoft is bringing it to us so that we can not... Regular Windows Explorer is hideous. Have you been playing PUBG? Has it been annoying the crap out of you how buggy and glitchy it is? Well, apparently Blue Hole is looking at themselves and being like, wow, we're really a blue hole of actual like bad video games. And they've launched the Fix PUBG campaign with which they have stated that they will, quote, for the duration of the campaign, we'll be entirely focused on addressing problems with the game, including bugs, long needed quality of life improvements, and fundamental performance improvements. End quote. They go on to say a bit more, but like, they even acknowledge long needed quality of life improvements. Like, come on. Like, at that point, it just seems like you're not even trying. Like, this is basically like, don't forget about us. Fortnite's overtaking us, and we still need your money, but they, like, if they're long needed, why haven't you done it already? This is like the EA moral compass thing. Like, if you need to announce that you're doing it, something is probably wrong and you don't have the customer at heart. And while Blue Hole might be finally fixing things that have been sorely overdue, one company is meddling in things that they probably don't need to meddle in. Okay, maybe that's not exactly true. I don't know the business side of Acer and whether or not this was like a legitimate business move that they needed to make, but what I can tell you they didn't need to make was the name. So Acer is spinning off of their gaming PC peripheral unit into something called Gadget Technology. Yeah, that's the name that Acer came up with. Their Acer Predator line, not good enough. We need to call this thing Gadget Technology. Hey, what kind of keyboard do you have? I have the Gadget Technology LT301. No. No, Acer, this is a terrible idea. Rethink the name. I don't care that you're spinning it off. Do what you gotta do as far as the business side. But gadget technology? Really? Do you guys like the name? Vote in that poll right up there. Which, speaking of business changes, uh, this is something that's gonna affect the guys in the office way more than it probably should. Uber Eats is changing their delivery fee structure. So instead of having a flat rate, they are going to change it based on distance. So in the US, it's currently a $4.99 fee and they're going to change that to a distance-based fare, which will be between $2 and $8 as the max booking fee for how far away the restaurant is for you. The only reason I would personally be okay with this is if they allow me to order restaurants that are too far away from me currently because I will pay more for the delivery fee because there's no McDonald's in my immediate area and Reese has two at his house and it ticks me off that he can have such a plethora of McDonald's choices and I'm stuck waiting for my Big Mac, which apparently Big Macs in South Africa are like mini Macs. They're not big at all. It's sad. It's like really sad. Anyways. I know I'm not supposed to eat McDonald's. I don't want you, you know, virtue signaling down in the comments telling me how bad it is for me. Okay, I just want a McDonald's that's available for delivery in my area, okay? All of that is to say, Uber Eats, please don't change the delivery charge. I like the flat fee structure. Okay, I'm on an event roll. So that means that we're gonna be covering a thing that Intel did yesterday. They had like a data center conference where they unveiled a whole bunch of stuff with their roadmap and announced certain things. So the first thing is that in the last year, people have bought a billion dollars worth of CPUs from Intel for artificial intelligence, which they are expecting to increase quite a bit by 2022 to the order of $10 billion. So, you know, just prepare for the coming AI overlords. That's just what we have to do at this point. And then they also confirmed a leak that we previously had from a hot news forever ago that I can't even remember where it came from. 
So there is going to be an architecture between the current Cascade Lake, which we already have announced, and the 10 nanometer Ice Lake. They're going to be implementing Cooper Lake, which is another 14 nanometer iteration because they still can't get 10 nanometers right. This is no surprise. We already know that we're getting a Coffee Lake refresh, again, because Intel can't actually develop higher performing chips. They just have to keep refining what they already have. It's the same thing that's going on in the high-end compute department as well. However, with regards to 10 nanometers, that doesn't mean that Intel hasn't produced anything there. So they also unveiled the Crimson Canyon Nook, which has a Canyon Lake CPU, the Intel i3-8121U, which is 10 nanometers, with a discrete Radeon graphics card. So AMD and Intel are taking their partnership forward with this. One of the first Cannon Lake all-in-one systems that you could potentially have it will be on sale at this point. It looks like it's rocking a Polaris GPU with 512 stream processors, 32 texture units, and two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. I'm not interested in the Nook, but I, I guess they're trying to hype up 10 nanometers somehow by releasing this. So good job, Intel. Proud of you. And then in some indirectly related Intel news, both ASRock and MSI have confirmed the existence of a Z390 chipset, which still isn't confirmed by Intel, so we're looking at external sources. For ASRock, it's based on their support page, and then for MSI, it's baked into some uh, codes in their command center software. So Z390, coming up hot. There has been another casualty in the war of video game ROMs, and this is coming through the form of EMU Paradise, or MU Paradise, or EMU Paradise however you want to say it, which, I mean, they claim that they were the biggest retro gaming website on earth and you could download ROMs for games like things that were on the Game Boy or, you know, the SNES or the NES or anything like that. And they're basically after Nintendo had sued both Love ROMs and Love Retro, which we talked about in the previous hot news, they're closing down the site, stating that it's not worth it for us to risk potentially disastrous consequences. I cannot in good conscience risk the futures of our team members who have contributed to the site through the years. We run Emu Paradise for the love of retro gamers and for you to be able to revisit those good times. Unfortunately, it's not possible right now to do so in a way that makes everyone happy and keeps us out of trouble. So in case you missed the news about Love ROMs and Love Retro, the potential fine and consequences that they're facing is upwards of billions of dollars, it's stating thousands of dollars per ROM that was listed on the website. And obviously when you have a bajillion ROMs, it comes out to over a bajillion dollars. So they're acting in self-preservation here to make sure that they pull down the site. Does this affect you shutting down Emu Paradise? Were you using them? Do you disagree with using ROMs? Any of that conversation, which is a lot of touchy subjects, let's chat about it down in the comments so that we can have a civil discussion because that's what we do here at UFT Tech. We talk about outrageous things civilly. It is graphics card time. So we reported a few days ago about Manly releasing like the Maxon GPU cooler that they were unveiling and that potentially there was a submission to the Eurasian Economic Union based on like what graphic, like it's basically almost like an FCC filing as far as I understand it. However, we have more data. There's a lot more filings that have happened. This is coming out of video cards where they list all of the different versions that have come out from the PG-150, PG-160, and PG-180, which are just, everything's ranked differently. We don't exactly know how this correlates to specific graphics card. Like the PG-180 doesn't necessarily mean that is the 1180 or 2080, just like the PG-150 wouldn't mean that it's the 1150, even though that's a card that I know many of you are excited for. It appears that there's been submissions for both GeForce cards as well as Quadros. And if you paid attention to the previous GPU news, NVIDIA is having a press conference this coming Monday at SIGGRAPH where it's expected that they would launch a new Quadro and they might unveil their next uh, architecture development. And then the following Monday at Gamescom is when we're expecting the new GeForce cards to be announced, the 11 or 20 series. So this Eurasian Economic Union filings just kind of confirms the things that we've been suspecting. No definitive information as to what this means or what type of performance it is, but uh, we're just keeping you up to date because this is hot news and GPUs run hot. And I love you too. Ah, now it's time to get into the titular news piece of the day, which I guarantee I know the flame wars are coming. Everybody just hold your horses. I'm gonna do my best to objectively present the information so that you can all complain and view things differently. That's not the goal. Why am I encouraging this? I shouldn't be. Let's move on to the articles. So the article that we're gonna be talking about is from Tom's Hardware. They compared AMD versus NVIDIA and how well they're performing after driver improvements through the years since the RX 480 launched and the GTX 1060 launched. 
And what they found, which is where all of the debate and anger and all of that kind of stuff is gonna come in, is that NVIDIA has performed significantly better than AMD over the course of time since those two cards have been released, which kind of flies in the face of the AMD fine wine argument because it looks like NVIDIA has better improvement than AMD does. However, there are a few things that I wanna talk about here. So if we take a look at the charts, we see that they tested 11 different games using three different driver builds. The thing that we have to pay the most attention to here is the games that they use. So they use Battlefield 3 and 4, Metro Last Light Redux, Grand Theft Auto 5, The Witcher 3, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Hitman, Tom Clancy's The Division, Battlefield 1, Ashes of the Singularity, and then Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. And out of all of those games, the NVIDIA card, the GTX 1060, had an average improvement of 4.3% per game, whereas the AMD card had about 2.3% improvement, which means that the NVIDIA card is roughly like 90% better of uh, improvement over the same period. The thing that I want to keep in mind here is just the performance that came out when the game launched. If we take a look at Hitman, which is the GTX 1060's biggest improvement of 15.3%, AMD is still 4.2% faster, which means that the 1060, and I remember this, sucked at Hitman at the time. That 15.3% improvement isn't something where the GTX 1060 is now amazing at the game, it just got up to competency level. And the same thing can kind of be seen with the Ashes of the Singularity improvement as well. They, they used DX12 to test the game, and GTX 1060 sucked at this. So it increased 12.8% because it was bad at the game initially. However, what we see is that AMD has actually declined in improvement on Ashes of the Singularity by 3.7%. So AMD did something to hurt its performance there, which means that the NVIDIA card ends up 8.5% faster than the AMD card, even though the AMD card would have had the advantage at the launch. A lot of this is subjective. A lot of this is a case-by-case -case basis. However, it does appear that there are three games where AMD has taken a performance hit based on the drivers, whereas NVIDIA only suffered a performance hit of 0.2% in Ghost Recon Wildlands was basically nothing. So if we look at NVIDIA, it looks like they're making more consistent improvements and that they're actually improving over time. Whereas AMD does make improvements, but they also do things that hurt them in the long run in specific games as well. And if we take a look at the final results, it appears that out of the 11 games chosen, NVIDIA is better in nine of them. But that doesn't mean that they didn't choose games that, are, that have a usual AMD heavy focus like Ashes of the Singularity, Battlefield 1 and Hitman. Those are included even though AMD, uh, AMD only wins in Tom Clancy's The Division and Hitman after the years between the 480 and the 1060. Okay, the thing that I wanna make clear here is that they didn't test this over the game development either. It's one version of the game over multiple different drivers. It's not like the game was also developing with patches. This doesn't appear to be a long-term test. This appears to be they tested the cards with three different drivers at the same time with the same version of the games. So game variation isn't something that can be explaining these results. But I want to state that I don't think that this means that AMD doesn't age like fine wine like a lot of people indicate that it would. It just means that the 480 probably hasn't aged as well as people are thinking that it has. The previous cards, like the HD 7770 or other ones before that, may have aged better than NVIDIA cards because of their focus on compute performance rather than trying to and optimize for the games at the time. However, I think that this does throw a little wrench into ge the generic argument of like, get the 480 because it's going to age better than the 1060. It doesn't appear that that has actually happened with Polaris. It could be that AMD will give drivers that'll make it better over the long term even more, and that two years isn't enough for that, and we need like five, but that's something that I, I personally am like, I'm not gonna be sticking with a 480 in five years. But what do you think of this? Are you gonna rage about this? Let's have that fiery debate. AMD, Nvidia, who's better? Down in the comments, let's start engaging. And that's going to wrap it up for hot news today. Let me know what you thought of anything we talked about today down below in the comments, whether it's NVIDIA trouncing AMD in the long term, NVIDIA fine wine is the way we're going to go for it. Or you want to talk about, you know, Emu Paradise dropping ROMs. I want to have that discussion with you down below. Don't forget. And don't forget as well that channel membership is something you should sign up for. Support us. You, get, you feel wonderful because like we get money and that's just how the world works. When Brett is paid, everybody's happy. Right, Reese? Right, Tank? When Brett gets paid, everybody's happy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and that's gonna wrap it up for Hot News today. I love you guys so much. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Like and subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. I, I'm just, I love you guys. Love you too. Bye.